you know, I went to see Pearl Jam and Soundgarden because I was a grunge kid, but that was also my introduction to Neil Young. And it really, it changed my life. Hi, Dallas. How are you doing, my man? Good, my friend. How are you? You played in Lollapalooza. Had you, did you have a good time here? Oh, it was the best. You know, I think all the guys were really looking forward to it. I, I thankfully had already been there a few times since we played 2012. So I had gotten to see a, lot, a, a bit more of the country and I was just really excited to be back playing with Alexis and especially our first tour since COVID to be down in South America. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better, a better return to, to playing rock music, you know, for, for the beautiful people of your country. They're just the most passionate people I've ever experienced in my life. Something that happened this time that, that blew our minds was the crowd started singing along to the guitar parts which we'd never experienced before, you know? And that was a real, like, that was a real beautiful moment for us on stage. Look, you, you, you kept almost the original lineup. How important is that for you? Oh, it's very important, you know, um, when Jordan took over drums, uh, when Jesse left the band, it was a very uh, difficult time, you know, that we had to move on from, from playing with Jesse, our friend, and Jordan really like saved us in a way in that moment. And Alexis doesn't exist without the bond that we have as, as the five of us, you know? So we've realized that too, I think over the years now that this band only exists when it is us. And so if somebody changes or somebody leaves or whatever, it stops for a while because um, it's not just about the name. It is about the bond that the five of us have together. Can we talk about the new album? Mm -hmm. Otherness, what's your favorite song in it? Uh, if I had to pick one, it would be Blue Spade. Blue Spade is my favorite. It's among my favorites. <laughs> okay, cool. My favorite one, Sweet Dreams of Otherness. Cool. I love it. That song is my favorite song so far this year. And I love the melodies, especially the melodies. You sing. I wish I could sing like you, my man. <laughs> well, really? You've probably, you know, you, everybody can sing. Just some people can do it a little bit different than others. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> you have a powerful voice in this song, especially. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really proud of that one, too. That's, a, that's one of my favorites, for sure. I think we had written eight, eight of the songs and that one just started coming to me because I started to really, I started to really understand how much I appreciate my relationship with these, these dudes and this thing that we can do together that I don't think I can do with anybody else. And that, you know, I don't think that anybody sounds like us. I think we are our own thing and we are that we have that otherness to us, you know, and I, I wanted to write a song like a love letter to us, to the idea of, of this otherness that I feel when, I, when I'm in a room making music with these, these men, you know? Things are kind of evolution of your music. 
or is something completely new for you? Well, yeah, I think, you know, because I don't, I don't think we want to, we're not trying to do a disservice to the old version or what we used to sound like, but we, I think we, we realized that we could just be whatever we wanted to be because that's what we've always been, you know, even though when we started, we were kind of put in the screamo genre or, you know, you, you get, you get put in to a place so people can talk about you and say, this is the band that they belong here. But I think as we were starting to write it, we just realized that, yeah, this, this band has always been whatever we feel like it should be at that moment. If we made the record we wanted to make, and we believed that it was, it was good, then the people that like us would get it and they would listen to it and they would appreciate it, even if it sounds a little different than what we used to sound like. And I think that you, you're going to get some new fans for sure. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think it's, you know, I think the people who like us will hear what they like about us in it. But I think people who maybe were on the fence or who have never heard us might, might take to it as well. Let, let's talk about Saint Soleil. Is it the, the right pronunciation? Saint Soleil, yeah. I think it's a hit. Oh, thank you. You think so? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a really good song. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we wrote a really beautiful song and it's, I mean, if I do say so myself, I think the singing is really, really good on it. And uh, I think the melody that Wade wrote is just beautiful. And I think it's catchy and it's personal. And uh, I think, like I said, I don't know what else you would want from a song. These days won't last. This too shall pass. mistaken information it's an, another hit to me too yeah I, i wrote that song long before we started making the record but then the way that the boys took the song and the way we made this arrangement like i didn't expect it to end up being prettier as the alexis version but it did you know like i thought we would take my song and make it more aggressive when wade heard that he just sort of really he turned it into this beautiful cinematic moment on the record i think you know with all the sort of uh, layers and or orchestration on it. And I love Word Stops Turning. Mm -hmm. That's an epic final for a, for a record, don't you think so? Yeah, no, I, 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 when I, when I came up with that idea, like I definitely told the guys, like I said, I think I wrote the song that we can play last for the rest of our career. <laughs> What kind of band do you imagine playing or would you like to be playing with you in a tour? Well, thankfully, like on this on this next couple of shows we're doing, we're getting to play with a lot of bands that I really love, like Mets. Our friends in Mets are, are opening for us soon in Montreal. That'll be good. We get to open for Rage Against the Machine soon. I mean, that would be great. I would love to go on tour with Rage Against the Machine, but I mean, who wouldn't? Uh, but there's lots of good bands. You know, the, the band Idols, I think Idols is a really great band or... Um, Turnstile would be a good tour, I think. How was your return to the band? Was it a slow process or you just felt like, I want to join the band again? I think, you know, when we started playing again a couple of years ago, it just felt natural, you know, like we, we, people kept asking, like we kept getting show offers and, and it just sort of seemed like, okay, people seem still interested in wanting to hear the band play. So that was sort of like the initial reasoning for playing again. It wasn't trying to like, You know, because when we broke up and we finished the tour, the world tour and all that stuff, we thought we did it really well. We thought we did like a very respectable kind of like end to the band. It was the people, the fans that have been listening to us that that sort of pulled us back to it, you know. And so for me, it was a it was a beautiful thing to find my way back to the band because, you know, when I left, it was the hardest thing I'd ever experienced in my life at that point. But so now to find myself um here talking to you about a new record after all this time like i couldn't be happier about it you know like it's this is a part of me it will always be a part of me and it is it is a place that i feel very comfortable and safe in and in a place where i i feel like i can create something that i can't do anywhere else what are you going to happen with sit in color i made it i actually made a sit in color record last year too i just 
so I'll put that out, you know, later on in the year. And I think that's the thing that we've, uh, uh, we all now appreciate that we're, we have other things we want to do, you know, but Alexis can still be this thing that we, it can still be this beautiful thing in our lives, you know, a city and color is something I'm very proud of, you know, and I, and I know that again, just like Alexis, there are a lot of people that really appreciate that side of me. And uh, I appreciate that they listen to it. So it's a relationship I want to still contribute to as I go on. Sit and color demands a different kind of energy, a different kind of mood. Do you see yourself like a kind of Dr. Jack and Mr. Hyde when, when you compose? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, I think just growing up the way I did and, and getting into the, the music I did where I always really loved aggressive music when I was young, but I also loved melody, you know, and then my mother would listen to Sade in the, in the living room and I, and I loved it. And my sister loved R&B and listened to Mary J. Blige and I loved it. And so um, I've always been interested in playing my guitar really loud, but also I've also been interested in playing, you know, writing quieter songs. And, you know, I feel, I think it's been confusing a lot of the time over the years of me trying to do this. And I think it's been confusing to people that they don't understand that I can be in both or do both. But I think now I've finally found this place in myself where I can be proud that I am able to do both things and that there are people that want to listen to both sides of me. These cold nightmares They make her worse for wear What about Helicon Blue? Don't you think it's an underrated band? Yeah, I mean, that was my first band, you know, my first real band um, with my, you know, my, my late cousin, Nick, who passed away in 2019 and my best friend at the time. And it was my first real uh, attempt at writing my own songs and, and sort of trying to, like, make a go of, of being in a band and, and writing my own music. Because I felt like even though I was young, I felt like I had something to contribute I mean, that's how I met everybody in, in Alexis. Like my Helicon was playing with all their bands. So um, it's a real special, it's a special place in my heart that I hold for, for that. was your first gig ever in your life do you remember that yeah the well the first real show that i got to see was i went my um my best friend's father at the time when we were young he brought us to toronto to see neil young pearl jam soundgarden and blues traveler at the at a place called the cne in toronto which is like the big outdoor exhibition stadium and it was right you know it was like 1993 or something right when when Neil sort of became the sort of godfather of grunge and took, took the grunge bands on tour. And I got to see that. And like, you know, I went to see Pearl Jam and Soundgarden because I was a grunge kid, but that was also my introduction to Neil Young. And it really, it changed my life, you know, seeing that, seeing the way people reacted to live music on a scale like that and being young and impressionable and already kind of like I'd been playing guitar for a bunch of years at that point. And I really started to realize how emotionally affected I was by music. You talked about grunge. What's your first record, Alice in Chains? Am I right? The first one you bought? That was my first, the first CD I ever bought with my own money was because it came out on my birthday. Dirt came out on wow. September 29th, 1991. And so my mom took me to the mall and I, and I, you know, I had get, been given like a $20 bill or something. And I bought the CD and went home and immediately started trying to learn every song. And, and it was just like, that was my, because as much as I'm a grunge kid, Alice in Chains are my band. That's my, you know, everybody's got Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden. Like I love all of those bands very much, but Alice in Chains was the one that really, really spoke to me on a level that I, that I wasn't prepared for, you know, that, that contrast of, again, contrast of incredibly aggressive heavy music mixed with beautiful singing beautiful harmony singing and and melody and and real emotion and torment and and you know even whether or not i understood that lane was singing about heroin addiction 
I still felt like he was speaking to me, you know, and that was like, again, of my first real moment of being emotionally connected to a song and not understanding, just, just knowing that it was making me feel something. Look, if you failed in music, do you have an idea of what you would like to do in your life? <laughs> no, I would have been trying. I'd be still trying to make music. You know, I had no other idea of what, what to do or I wasn't really, you know, I was, I liked basketball and skateboarding a lot, but those were not, uh, those weren't two things I was going to be able to make a living at doing, you know? So writing songs and, and, and making music always just felt like something I could, it felt like something I could understand. I know you are looking forward to release the new album. Are you going to be on tour? Yeah, we're going to go play a couple of shows. We've got, we've got some touring lined up for the rest of the year. And then, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to kind of go back and come back to South America again and, you know, go to, go to a couple of other places we haven't been to in a, in a long time. And just, yeah, just keep the, keep the fun spirit going. And to finish here, how do you like to be on tour? I love it. I mean, I've, it's, it's the thing I've done most in my life, you know, uh, since I was 21 years old and I started touring f full time. I've done that more than I've done anything else. So uh, for me, it feels sometimes it feels more like home than being at home does. So, yeah, it's just it's just a part of me at this point. You know, like I don't I can't I don't understand making a record and not going out and playing it. I, they, they go hand in hand in my mind. Dallas, thank you very much for your time, man. Good luck on the road, eh? Thank Cheers. you. Thanks a lot, man. Talk to you later. See you, man. Man.